Good morning, and welcome to Frieden's Lutheran Church in Center Valley on this, the first Sunday of Christmas. Thank you for tuning in for our online worship service. Even though Christmas Day was rather different, I'm sure, for the majority of us, I hope it still brought you a measure of joy and peace, particularly as we celebrate the reason for the season, our Savior Jesus Christ. We look forward to a new year, 2021, hopefully that will bring us better health and more opportunities to be united uh, in person. That's what, is w what we hope for. That is what we're working towards. Thank you for joining us. Let us now begin with our opening litany. We come to you this Christmas, O Lord, with thankful hearts. We praise you for the gift of Christ Jesus, our Savior. We savor the beautiful scriptures. We remember how the Messiah arrived as a baby in Bethlehem. We sing songs to echo the joy of the angels. Glory to the newborn King. We know that Christ was born into a world darkened by sin and injustice. In our world today, people are still suffering. Even in this season of bright lights and joyful songs, we cannot forget that there are people in pain because of poverty, hunger, and disaster. Heal our broken world, O oh Lord. Guide us, dear Messiah, so we can bear witness to your mercy and love. Equip us to support each other so that more people can have enough food, good health, fruitful work, and greater justice. May we demonstrate your grace to our community and world. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the first, first Sunday of Christmas is recorded in the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Psalm is 100. 48 read responsively. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reading is recorded in the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, verses four through seven. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the second chapter of St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, 
Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be, re be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the son of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Allow me to set the scene for our gospel reading this morning. In order to fulfill the law of the Lord, Jewish families went through at least three ceremonies after the birth of their firstborn son. The first, and the one which is recognized on this first Sunday after Christmas, was circumcision, a physical sign of the Jews' covenant with God, a ceremony that was filled with bo both joy and solemnity as relatives and neighbors gathered with the family in order to dedicate the child to God with love and gratitude. In this ceremony, the father acted as a sort of high priest, offering his child to God. Some suppose that the ceremony began with a benediction, a blessing, as it did in later times, and closed then with the naming of the child in a prayer over a cup of wine. The prayer may have been much like this one. Our God, the God of our fathers, Raise up this child to his father and mother, and let his name be called in Israel, Jesus. So it is in the temple, in a public ceremony, on the eighth day after his birth, where we find the Christ child at the beginning of our gospel reading today. For on this day, Jesus was circumcised and named. 
However, you will note that within a single Bible verse, we fast forward about a month to when the second and the third ceremonies took place. The redemption of the firstborn, a more formal dedication ritual in Jerusalem, consecrating or presenting the child to God, that was the second ceremony. And then the purification from childbirth for Mary, who was considered ceremonially unclean for 40 days until a sacrifice was offered in the temple on her behalf as part of the cleansing process. It is on this day of dedication and purification that we meet two wizened elders in the Jesus story. The first is Simeon, a devout man of faith whose life can now end in peace, having beheld the long-awaited Messiah. And Anna, a widow and a prophetess, who also recognizes the true identity as well as the painful future of the Holy One who is cradled in Simeon's arms. It is Simeon and Anna's story, which I'd like to share with you this morning during this time of reflection. A story called, I Already Know, by the author and humorist and ordained minister, Ralph Milton. Her legs were bowed from childhood rickets, as well as 84 years of life. I walked like an old goose, she would cackle, but in my mind I soar like an eagle. Sometimes Anna counted her years by the people she had survived. Five children she had borne and outlived every one of them. She'd been the midwife who brought the high priest of the temple into the world and now acted as his unofficial mother emeritus. Very unofficial, Anna grins. His highness doesn't want it known that I wiped his nose and his bottom when he was small. But he comes and talks to me when nobody's looking. It wouldn't do for him to be seen talking to a woman, now would it? Anna had moved into the temple, expecting to die there soon, but death didn't come. Instead, a new kind of life, a life of caring and counseling and friendship to the many, many people who came in and out of the temple each day. Her body grew smaller, her legs bowed a little bit more, but her eyes grew bright and gentle with wisdom. And a special concern was for young families. Jewish custom required a firstborn son to be brought to the temple and dedicated to God. Those parents, she said, they're so frightened and so anxious. We've got lots of priests around here, but they're so busy being important that they don't have time for these young families. So I just show them around and help them get things done. Anna, Anna's special concern was for poor families, intimidated by wealth and power of the temple, afraid of being cheated by the money changers, as they often were. But Anna got them through. That was her mission, getting them through a tough time. And Anna had a secret dream. She hadn't shared it with anyone except her old friend, Simeon. Anna and Simeon, like Jewish people everywhere, had been raised with the hope 
that someday God would send a Messiah, a chosen one, someone who, who would usher in a new era of love and justice. Do you suppose we might see God's chosen one, old Simeon were, would ask? Do you suppose it's possible? I live in hope, dear Simeon, the old woman replied. I live in hope. But how will we know, Anna? How will we know? We'll know, Simeon, Anna said. And then she wondered why she felt so confident. Now, it was getting late in the day, and Anna was rather tired. She had been active all day in the temple in her ministry of simply being there for anyone who needed her. And then she saw a frail teenage girl carrying a baby, and beside her a man who was somewhat older. Anna walked over as quickly as her bowed legs could carry her. Welcome to the temple, my children. She would see that they were hot and tired from their long walk. Come over here, she invited them. Come to the shade of the wall. You can rest for a moment. May I see your child? Now, it wasn't that the baby looked different than all the other babies who were brought into this holy place. There was really nothing unusual about the mother who held him. But there was something very different happening inside of Anna, an exquisite ache, a sense of powerful weakness. Simeon. The name was whispered, but with such intensity that the old man who was dozing nearby woke with a start, and he hurried over to Anna. Simeon looked at this child and saw nothing unusual, but then he looked into the fire-bright eyes of his old friend. Anna, do you suppose... And her eyes answered his question. Simeon began to sing an ancient song, half remembered, half made up. A song of hope, a song of thanksgiving, a song of pain and rejoicing. Anna, who had no voice at that moment, sang along in her heart. Dear God, prayed the old man, now I can die in peace, as you promised. I have seen your salvation, a gift to all people, a light for the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. Late at night, Anna wept long and quietly. She grieved and celebrated all that was and all that was yet to be. And then she slept. It was only a few days later that Anna was midwife at another kind of birth. Her old friend Simeon was dying and she was at his side holding his hand and helping him through it as she had helped so many others through life's changes. I think I can die now, Anna. I'll know very soon whether that child really is the Messiah, the chosen one. I'll know very soon. And with that, Simeon closed his eyes for the last time. But I already know, my dear friend, I already know, sleep well. Amen. Amen.
Let us now join together in the profession of our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us now pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O oh God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and to save. This day we especially lift up before you Bill and June, Leona, Darwin and Hunter, Hope, Laurie and Taylor, Pat, Charlie, Rick, and all who are affected by the COVID virus. We also pray for those who have recently been affected by the explosions in Nashville, as well as the wildfires in California. Keep all in your tender protection and care. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O oh God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and every place. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. 
God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I would now invite you to take your sealed communion elements or something comparable that you may have at home with you. You may unseal the top so that you have access to the wafer. The body of Christ given for you. And you may unseal your communion element of the, the grape juice at this time. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace and love now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day, through the word made flesh. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
Go in peace. Share the love and light of Christ. Thanks be to God.